afternoon. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule to uh, come here this afternoon. This is a part of history that's really not well known around the world, let alone the country. It began about one year and four months ago. I was injured in the streets of Sadr City, which is a section in Baghdad, and I was taken back to uh, one of the main bases for rehabilitation. During that time, I got really, really bored. There wasn't a whole lot to do. So, a lot of thoughts in my head. So I sat down at the computer and I typed myself an email. In this email, there were a flood of memories. They were very unorganized. and began to flow out into this long version of a story. In the two hours that I wrote this email to myself, Try and figure out what just happened over the past few months. I would relive all the fresh memories of combat in the unforgiving streets of Baghdad. I would remember smells, sounds, and the sweet taste of adrenaline brought on only by enemy gunfire. I would recount the hottest days where temperatures would rise above 145 degrees in the city. The gear we carried weighed roughly 110 pounds on the light end. And every, the average man's water intake was between four and six liters. Water everywhere is the key to life, and out there it was detrimental if you did not drink. There was no room for weakness in the body in the streets of Sadr. You had to be agile and move quick when shot at. When raising your weapon to engage a target, your muscles, they would shake from dehydration, from fear, from adrenaline, and just utter exhaustion. Words like comfort or failure, you could not entertain those in your mind at that time. To entertain your muscles with those words would invite death, either to yourself or the guy next to you. Loss of friends, all who died for a country and a cause that America should, never, should ever be proud of. Noble were they all. For a noble purpose did they serve, and noble cause did they die for. Mike Elledge and Chris Simpson were the first two casualties we took. Their lives were taken by the hands of a coward who detonated a bomb. Christopher Fox, however, died shortly uh, before he left. He was handing a little girl a bottle of water in the street. He was killed by a sniper. All these thoughts and emotions came back so clearly in the two-hour span of time that it seemed like an eternity. When I had finished the email, I sat back in my chair to see what was written. I realized one thing at that point. When I seen this massive email, so many errors, but I seen this big email and I realized that uh, one thing was true, that I was not going to be able to rest, meaning every night of sleep, that I stayed awake all those long hours until I could tell the story in some way. The story's not for fame or for glory. It's not for any of those things. It's to get the word out to everyone possible. But Families know in America that even though the war still goes on, the, uh, the cost has been well worth it. Seeing it twice so far on different perspectives has really opened my eyes not only in life, but the things that are taken for granted on a daily basis that I still take for granted sometimes. So begins the story. Long story. Our mission was in Sadr City, Iraq. And to give you a best explanation of this, I'm going to show a video of what happened. There we go. Word got out about, I'd say, a month or two into the fighting. What had happened was our outpost which was on the corner of the city, was the, was the only outpost that stood between the green zone, which was a secure area of Baghdad where all command operations took place, and Sadr City itself, which from everyone I've talked to from California is best described as South Central LA, for a So it began with a three-day firefight. What happened was the insurgency amassed enough men in Sadr City over the entire war from the invasion to start mounting massive attacks on checkpoints. 
the American forces, along with other coalition forces, had a long-standing agreement with the people in Sadr City, along with the residents of Baghdad, that if we stayed out of Sadr City, they would stay out of Baghdad. And that went on for a long time, random bombings, things like that took place, but nothing ever to really break the truce. When a three-day attack took off, they began to sweep through the five major checkpoints that guarded the city, and they began to place little strongholds throughout neighborhoods where they could plan and carry out their missions. Whenever they finally came to where our, our outpost was, we were told within a minute's notice to get everyone go to this outpost and defend it at all costs. This one outpost, if it had fallen, that would have probably meant the end of Baghdad, literally. We were facing a militia of 65,000 men, and in theater, ground combat troops and troops who could, were able to drive or shoot in an armored vehicle, our numbers were a little over 1,000. Though we had better technology than any nation in the world, our problems still relied with the sheer numbers we were facing. So as the three-day battle went on, the first miracles I realized that took place, which is where I get the term angels inside the city. Because from my perspective, there was divine protection and guidance with the odds and everything else that took place. 